1991, the American military forces Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. The original three Nicktoons premiere. The folding of the Soviet Union marks the end of the Cold War. And the Nintendo Sega rivalry has been taken up a notch. Though Nintendo had a new console out on the market, they weren't quite ready to send the NES off to the breakers. More games would be made for it, but they wouldn't be as big as the three S and Bs. This relaxed time for the old black and gray box saw the release of NES Open Tournament Golf. It may or may not be the first Mario sports game since the character in Golf was retconned by Nintendo of Japan into a different character called Osan. We talked about this in video 4. Not a whole lot to say about this one. It's basically just a more polished version of the original Golf. It has a training mode, selectable courses, and you can play against a computer. You can also earn prize money, which Donkey Kong keeps track of. It wasn't exactly an albatross, but it would pave the way for the Mario Golf games. Dr. Mario, as stated, was Nintendo's first big success in terms of making puzzle games. They tried to make a second, with the game Yoshi. Enemies fall from the top of the playing field, and you have to match two of them together to make them disappear, or trap a whole line in a Yoshi egg. You can do this by swapping the places of the columns. As you can predict, you'll lose if a column touches the top. Yoshi can be fun at first, but that enjoyment tends to wear off due to the slow pace and the imbalance of monster drops only makes it cheaper. You'll often have a stack close to the top, and you're whispering, Man, I need a top half. Come on, come on, come on. Top half, top half, top half. All in all, render emulated. Same thing goes with the Game Boy port. I recommend playing either version of B-Mode to get the most enjoyment. It's worth noting, though, that this game was developed by a fledgling game company called Game Freak run by an up-and-coming Satoshi Tajidi. Despite negative reception, Yoshi sold half a million copies. It made enough cash for Game Freak to remain in operation and become a second-party developer for Nintendo, eventually creating a franchise of their own making. The following year on the Super NES would see the release of Mario Paint, a game that required usage of the SNES mouse. Well, maybe not so much in games that was an art program. You can doodle, customize stamps, color pictures, and even animate. There's also a little mini game that comes with the cartridge, Nat Attack. You play as a glove flying around hitting bugs with a fly swatter. When you take a hit, you do a Macaulay Culkin impression. When all the bugs are gone, a big one comes out and you have to take it down. When I was about 5 or 6, I went playing Nat Attack because of this one guy. The music and the fact that he laughs at you when you die just freaked me out. Whenever Dad would play it, I would go into the next room until I heard the boss on the verge of exploding. Speaking of music, this is the first Mario title that Kazumi Tataka did a soundtrack for. On the title screen, if you click the O in Mario, you'll trigger an explosion and a little bit of music. This is Totaka's song. A short bit of music Totaka uses as an Easter egg. If he's credited as composer, that snippet is most definitely in the game somewhere. Oh, there was also some composition feature on there where you can make songs. Nobody used it and it ultimately died once the internet came along. You'll probably find maybe four or five YouTube videos showing it off. Colossal failure. 
But what everybody remembers was a different game. Super Mario Brothers and Friends, when I grow up for the MS-DOS. It was basically just a coloring book function, but with more stuff to color, plus a mixer. It even had Zelda cameos and two versions of Bowser. Obviously, a gigaton of videos have been made on this game alone. Come back next time and see what happens when the Mario cast watches too many Speed Racer reruns.